Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. Today, just a fun little project working around here, building a uh, one of those uh, gas pipe tables that was hot back in the day, early 2000s, I think. So first things first, let's talk about the uh, materials that I'm using here. Uh, they're all greasy, so put some gloves on. Basically, I'm just using three quarter inch uh, black pipe it's called, or gas pipe it's usually used for. I just picked all this stuff up at the hardware store. Uh, one thing I'll say is it's definitely not cheap to make one of these tables. Um, if you're interested, I will put a list of all the materials I'm using for this table in the description. Um, this table will be about 31 and a half inches tall, plus or minus. Um, so I did have some custom cut pieces, but most of the pieces were just um, normal lengths, 12 inches, for example, on this guy. As we get a little bit further, we'll see, you'll see how I'm setting it up or building it. <clears throat> I'm just going to do these uh, flanges uh, that'll attach to the underside of the top. So first things first, because this is, um, it's got like a coating on it, almost like a tar, but it's some sort of paint and they're uh, pretty greasy. I want to wash them down. I'm going to scrub everything down with paint thinner and uh, some Scotch-Brite. I like the look of them when they're sanded. I don't try and get it like completely uh, down all the way. I leave a little bit of the black. It just kind of gives it some character. Definitely looks cool. First, we can uh, build the legs on the table before it gets too big. And this. Do another one here. A T. And another T. This will be the crossbar. Let's uh, put the rest of it together on the bottom side. Another foot, and then we can add these. And then what we'll do on the top is add these uh, flanges. That is one of the legs. Um, now what we're gonna do, this table is gonna be eight foot long, the top of it, but the frame, I had these uh, seven foot pieces of pipe uh, cut. So I'm gonna add those here, and then uh, we'll build the other side. Okay, so we got that side done. We got our uh, cross pieces in here. This is where I had to get that union because I wouldn't be able to um, build that set up there and put these on, because when you try and thread this if you tried to thread this pipe onto both of them, one side's gonna loosen, the other's gonna tighten. So. What we'll do take them apart, put them on there. And that's how you make that work. That's uh, You could do another one of these down at the other end if you want, but it's not necessarily needed. And then I'll just add these little close nipples. You don't want to use a wrench to tighten these because it's all thread and you'll just mangle it up. So the trick is, is when you get these T's on there, when you are tightening the T, it spins that and it'll, it'll just tighten up as it goes. So if you are using this in a, you know, a gas pipe situation or a plumbing situation, you would um, 
just tighten it like so and then that'll tighten up as as everything gets tighter but luckily we are not using having any pressure with this so it doesn't have to be perfect do our little legs here 12 inch on the bottom Now we gotta build a top. Let's get started. Yeah. This is uh, some red wood lumber that I found at the hardware store on sale. So uh, can't complain about that. Looks pretty nice, I think. Uh, it is four quarter, meaning one inch thick. The one issue that this with this frame style is there's not a bar that goes through here to give this some rigidity, or I mean, to kind of hold things a little better. So what's gonna happen if we just built this and slammed these together and then put it on is over time, this is gonna sag. Gravity is gonna, gonna do its thing, does it well. So what we're gonna do is take one of these, I got some extras, cause it, is, it was fairly cheap. We'll take one of these, cut it in half, and then create a frame that will hold, that will go around this and then also do some cross braces in here to hold everything together. So let's get started on that. Any of your dimensional framing lumber is gonna come with square cuts, but a lot of the time when you get these different types of woods, trims and stuff like that, you should always flush cut the end because it, sometimes they just cut them raw and they're kind of wavy and all that. So a good trick is just to cut it straight. So another thing that I'll do um, because it's gonna be real hard to, to cut it perfectly straight the first time and it's just a little bit easier this way is I'll add uh, two inches or so to my uh, length that I want the table. Alrighty, so we got the frame all cut up and figured out. Uh, a couple things to think of on the frame there, my flanges, I wanted to make sure that they would fit inside this pocket here. So I did measure that and make sure that they'll fit here. Just something to think about. I didn't want it to be, to gravity be doing its thing. So I want to give it a little bit of help. So that's why I built this frame and also added these braces here. One thing that I will be doing is using the Craig jig and pocketing these screws instead of coming through the face. I should just give it a little bit better look. I didn't 45 the corners. Uh, this is made out of metal pipe and, you know, rawish wood. So I just wanted to, I didn't need to 45 all this or anything to make it too fancy. This just kind of keeps that rustic industrial look going with the edges there. We got the frame all put together, looking pretty good. Next thing I wanna do is um, fasten it to the boards here that will be uh, the top. Again, this seemed to work out pretty well and it would be nice to have these boards down without seeing any fasteners coming up through to the bracing here. So what I'm gonna do is use the, the jig here and drill holes along 
these braces and also scatter some on this, on the uh, ends here. Another thing I did is uh, marked where these boards, where they're sitting. I uh, just did a little mark there so I have kind of a reference to where they're at after I remove them. That way I can just drill the holes where they need to be. Alrighty, so there we have it. We got the uh, frame all buttoned up. Let's flip it over, see what we're working with. Hey, hey, not too bad. Seems pretty flat. So this piece will actually be used in a, uh, a retail space, so they'll be putting products all over it. I think it looks pretty good. Let's get the rack, see if it fits. So there you have it. Got the top done. Looks pretty good. Hides the uh, flanges up there. Just gives it a good look. Uh, no nails going through, which is nice. Also, nothing uh, screwed in from the top. Came out pretty cool. The next thing I want to do on this is put a shelf down below here where I had those two bars running through. And instead of running the wood lengthways, I'm just going to cut uh, some cutoffs and put oof, and put those uh, under here. We'll attach them all together. So uh, let's get started. The way I want to go about the lower shelf is the width of this is uh, 21, 21 and a half, 21 and five eighths. And I just pretty much want to match that on the bottom. Uh, that way you don't have like a little gap here where stuff could fall off on the back side. Um, when it's up against the wall, it'll be up against the wall on the bottom also. And then uh, I'll also rip another one of these in half and attach them all together pretty much the same way we did the, uh, not necessarily the same, we'll probably just lay it flat. Um, you'll see. Let's get started. Got all the uh, lower shelf pieces cut. The uh, one issue that I did run into, and I'd like to share it with you, so you could fix it if you get to that point. The length of my lower shelf is supposed to be 83 inches. Um, 15 of these gets me to 81 and a half, and 16 gets me to 87. So what I've decided to do is I'm just gonna cut the middle one, my difference, which will be about three and three quarters. So I'll rip this down to three and three quarters, and then once they're all together, it'll be uh, my uh, 83 inches. And also a nice part about that is it kind of centers your eye and just kind of gives it a really neat and you know done type of look. So let's uh, take this one out and rip it up. One other thing we got to do now that we cut it though is uh, put another round over on there. Let me uh, let me try the spoke shave. Next thing I want to do is attach them all together. I'm just going to do this a little different and uh, lay it flat. 
One reason is because I'm gonna have those bars, the metal pipe will be running through here and that'll act as good support, keep it from sagging. Uh, all this is really gonna do is just hold them all together so they're not moving around freely. And the way I'm going to attach it will be just using uh, inch, and, inch and a half, inch and five eighths uh, drywall screws. Alrighty, got it all put together. Let's flip it over. Another big reveal. Oh yeah. There it be. Not too bad. Let's uh, see if it fits. That's the big question. Alrighty, so now we're down to the details here. Um, one of the things back in the beginning, I said just cut them, cut your boards long. The reason I'm doing that, the reason I did that is because it um, it allows me to kind of have variances on these boards because it's it's hard to cut a board the same length every time with all these other boards unless you have uh, special chop saw equipment or something like that. <clears throat> so I just cut them long and then I'll cut it along here and that should be a nice straight cut. Uh, I do use a very good blade for situations like this and I always just kind of take that one off and stash it and it, uh, it allows for good cuts all the time. So let's cut this up and then also I'm gonna round the edges and we'll, we'll take a look at that and uh, sand this over so it kind of has this uh, like eighth inch round on here. Before we put a coat of paint on here, uh, People, the person that this is for wants it whitewashed, so that should be kind of fun. Let's get started. So another thing that the, the folks that are gonna be enjoying this table want is to have a round over on the uh, corners of the table just to keep kids from gouging their head open. Let me show you how I make this happen. So on these corners, I just wanted a really gentle, small corner. Um, the way I do it is I'll just grab a fitting. Uh, this is actually a thread protector, but I'll just grab a uh, three quarter inch pipe fitting here and put that on the corner there. And you can use your Ticonderoga to kind of get you flushed out on the edges and then just mark it. Then I'll get out the uh, pool saw. Uh, if you don't have one of these and you en enjoy or you want to get into woodworking at all, these are uh, pretty good to, could, good to have. They're definitely uh, good for fine detailing and stuff like that. And then I'll just kind of go to the long point of that mark I made and just cut it off. Be gentle when you get towards the end there. Perfect. And then I'll just uh, grab one of the, uh, grab a block of wood and uh, wrap some uh, sandpaper around it. And then I'll just shape, round off the edges and uh, shape up this corner. And then also while I'm here, I just want to smooth this, uh, round over this edge here, just to match what I got going on. Take off the sandpaper, and you don't want to sand your wood cross grain like this uh, to get that edge gone, but just follow the grain and kind of roll it over the edge. Take that sharp edge off. Chase everything. Don't look half bad. Pretty simple.
Alrighty, so now we get to the somewhat nerve-wracking part. Uh, these people want it whitewashed, so uh, it's kind of an experiment. So basically, I just got some white paint down here, and I'm just going to kind of mix uh, paint and water. You want it a little bit thicker than thinner, or depending on how not wash, whitewashy you want it, then you would do more of a, more water. But uh, yeah, let's just... Uh, Let's see what we can do here. So once you add some water and then stir it up, uh, just give it a little test run. See, I got this piece here. It's uh, a little more red than blonde. The other side's a little blonder. Eh. Also, make sure you get the end because you want to see what that's going to look like. And then pretty much as soon as you put it on, Grab a clean rag and wipe it off. And those ends are gonna soak it up a lot quicker and deeper. But yeah, it definitely brings out the grains, soaks into the knots for sure. Alrighty, let's give it a shot, see what happens. Well, so there you have it. The, uh, I call it the freestyle table. I just kind of was winging it as I was going along, putting things together. Uh, all total, this is about 80, 85 bucks in wood and about another 80 to $100 in metal. So just under 200 bucks for a pretty neat one of a kind table. Uh, I think that's a pretty good deal. Maybe a day's work after, you know, everything. Filming it makes it a little bit tougher, but yeah, probably eight hours work, get it done. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking, I'm calling it freestyle because I was just kind of thinking up as I was going along, just, oh, I'll, I'll do this to do that, you know, and so uh, I hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. So you like it? No, it's not done. Oh, okay, it's not done. Sure. And you just made it? Yep. Really? I'll take that.